Joining me now is Charlie Wabrinskoy. He's the vice chair and head of the investment group at Ariel. These are like the perfect bookends, Charlie, of the, of the whole market in a nutshell. Um, I take the points Francis is making, but you would look at things a little bit differently, right? That would be an understatement, Kelly. Um, so right now, uh, there are lots of different theories on where inflation comes from. In fact, there are lots of different things that cause inflation. The point is all of them right now are pointing at higher inflation. So if you're a monetarist like me, you believe the money supply really matters. M2 money supply is up 40%. If you are somebody who believes that the Fed controls things, the Fed fund rate is right now at 50 basis points, which is negative real interest rates. We have negative real interest rates right now. That's inflationary. There are supply side people who think this is about our ability to produce goods. And clearly that's inflationary right now as we aren't being able to get the supply of goods that we need. There are people that think this is about wages. We have the tightest wage and labor market that we've had probably in 40 years. We have globalization, which has been a negative force for inflation, producing people shipping goods, manufacturing to low cost markets. That is slowing down. And if anything, there's going to be insourcing. So no matter how, what theory of inflation you believe in, all factors point for higher and persistent inflation. I think, frankly, the other side is just grasping at straws. This all comes down to investment strategies as well. And so, you know, I know obviously we always talk about your stock picks in particular, but broadly speaking, in terms of sectors, where would you be, for instance, on the consumer? Which part of the consumer landscape would you be in right now? Most importantly, this points to value versus growth. Value has been so out of favor for the last 10 years with everybody thinking you got to buy FANG stocks that there we have so many value stocks that are so cheap and these inflationary and interest rates moving up are very good for value stocks relative to growth, which is what we're seeing on days like today when value is crushing growth. Um, secondly, you're absolutely right. There are parts of the consumer market that are very cheap. Names like, you know, I love Madison Square Garden Entertainment, which mm -hmm. is up about 10% this year, but is still very cheap because there's huge pent up demand for entertainment, for experience, for getting out there. And that stock uh, we think um, is is worth more than $100 a share trading for less than 80. So we think there's huge pent up demand for cars. Borg Warner is going to be help uh, companies make electric vehicles um, trading at seven times earnings. So that is where we see real value in value stocks. Sure. Now, why is it that you do admit you've lost little confidence in the strength of the economy and the labor market? Yeah. So, so I'm not going to deny that that Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, is very is going to be very tough on the European economy, uh, and it, higher energy prices and input costs are absolutely a negative for the U.S. economy. The uh, European economy is probably 20 percent of the world's GDP. They're a big buyer of U.S. goods. It's not good for the U.S. economy. I will admit that, and I will admit sentiment does matter, and sentiment has been softening among the consumers. But that so I'm going to say that the chance of a recession in the next before the end of next year is probably up to 30 percent, not the 50 percent that a lot of people think. But I can't deny that these there's some headwinds on the economy that didn't exist before Russia invaded Ukraine. Yeah, but not enough for you to change, uh, make any dramatic changes yet. Charlie, appreciate your time today. We'll check back in soon.